Let me just turn my phone volume off. Yeah, we're good. Hello, YouTube trading aficionados, and welcome to the Coach's <laughs> Playbook. The date today is May the 12th, 2020. And today, we are going to talk about uh, the markets a little bit, but our theme, if you will, is going to be the common mistakes we see day traders making or the common day trading mistakes as the YouTube SEO would have us do. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically mistakes we've all made. Yeah, right. we've all made it. I remember um, when I started off at the uh, prop shop, they said that, you know, they were teaching us how to enter orders and stuff like that. And you, you put your sell orders in one column, you put your buy orders in the other. And they just said, at some point, you're going to flip a ticket. And I'm like, no, I'm going to be super careful about this. You don't understand. I'm going to double, triple check. But uh, then it happens. So we all make these mistakes. It's good to get them out in the open. Uh, by the way, flipping a ticket is when you uh, buy something, you flip your ticket. You buy something you meant to sell or you sell something you meant to buy. Um, that's one common mistake you occasionally see people make. But um, Hogue, you work a lot with traders. So we're thinking maybe... Well, first, Mick is writing out something. Maybe he's talking about, uh, do you have a trader we can give a shout out to? I, I do. I, I was doing the, uh, the quick button push, the mouse push, you know, oh, with flipping good. a ticket. You know, it usually happens when you're, you know, actively clicking very quickly. Good, because I thought it was rude that uh, I was going to get to the trader shout out at some point. <laughs> so, Mick, um, do you have a trader shout out today? I do. I do. Sorry I cut that short. And I guess this isn't really a, a good indication of anything. <laughs> um, could be taken many different ways. Yeah, big shout out to Ulf Eisholt. Um, put up about twenty four hundred dollars in the Nasdaq this morning. So, oh, uh, that's really awesome! Out of him, day's barely going. Yeah, yeah, those things are really moving. I take it he was long. Um, so, Hogue, you work a lot with our traders. What do you see as some of the common mistakes that you see uh, them making? Well. Um, uh, there's a, there's a lot of common mistakes. Um, the most popular ones that I hear about are um, failing to kind of recognize when they're, they're becoming over emotional. Um, you know, there it's, it's always um, to me uh, difficult to, to understand that um, there are times when emotionally you're not prepared to, to take the risk. A lot of times it's, you know, if you have a personal daily loss limit, you know, let's say just for example, your personal daily loss limit is, is 500 and you can't just say, okay, I'm at my personal daily loss limit. Maybe I should watch, maybe I should read, maybe I should do something today uh, other than this, but you, you kind of fall into the, uh, the what if mistake. And I call the what if mistake is, well, what if the next trade that I take is the one that's going to make me whole again? And uh, anybody that's been at that level, and kind of emotionally is less likely to make good solid choices. So that what if to me is um, is a a kind of a uh, a mistake even even for myself if I'm having a bad day and I and I get to that level where I'm starting to feel emotional and I and I feel that what if to me that's nine times out of ten been a mistake and kind of a deeper kind of mistake than just making a mistake on the dome. Which by the way, you make a mistake on the dome just get out don't become yeah. the the accidental trader yep yeah fix that if you make an error on the screen get out don't don't sit there and hope or wait um it's you know come back john, i can pick up a couple ticks. <laughs> yeah. yeah and I, I think what you were just explaining john is something that you know probably a good majority of the traders out there do go through uh early on guilty as charged I, I used to be in that mindset and you know those losses do usually get a little bit larger you got to start somewhere, um, but it's. I'm happy we're you know talking about it right now to make it you know get it out in the open. Uh, I was probably guilty of that for longer than I should have been, and um, I guess from time to time it can still pop back into your your trading. Yes, it can. It, it's always it can rear its ugly head whenever it wants to. Yeah, so. you know it's the question of how many times will you get slapped in the face before you realize you you should stop doing that. Yeah. FOMO is one yeah. of those things that really affects traders of all level. I saw a story online, you know, from a couple of years back, I guess, of some guy who uh, didn't understand option assignment. He ended up making $110,000 on a option assignment, just complete luck. Now, the reason that that's a story that is still circulating around years later is because that will not happen to you. 
You know, like <laughs> you don't, you want to be in control of your trades. You never want to be just like taking something because you say flip the ticket or stuff like that. Just get out. Um, Dan, what about you? Well, just speaking of flip the ticket, one of the things that I always struggled with in the very, very beginning down the floor, you'd hear someone yell, all right, I paid 50 for four or four at four at 50, 50 for four, four at 50. It always took me, I'd have to sit there and process because I made the mistake too many times of flipping that ticket and going 50 for four or four at 50. What the hell's the difference? And I'd have to talk myself through it. Okay. Paid 50 for four contracts. Okay. Sold four at 50. I used to have to walk myself through it because I flipped it a couple of times in the beginning. And so I used to have a little cheat card in my jacket that I go just a quick glance. Am I doing this right? No matter how many times I would run it through in my head, I'd still look down. Okay, I'm good. All right, I can keep going. (laughs) The lexicon, (laughs) you have to deal with other people doing trades and stuff. It's paid equals buy. Yeah. Right. Sell equals sell. And yeah. Seems sell simple. is sell is at and sell is uh, at. Paid, paid is over. is by. That was it's funny you mentioned that because that that brings back memories. I used it, to uh, I used to get corrected on that a number of times. You know, we, all the time. We we bought X at Y and was like, you what do you what? mean we bought? That's what I just at. said. Nobody right? buys like, at. You sell at. <laughs> right. You, um, you paid you paid forty for one. You didn't buy one at forty. Exactly. Right. And that was, that was one of the most confusing things in the beginning. Like, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing here. And then you'd, someone would run up and go, Hey, did I do 40 at four with you? I go, okay. Yes, 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 we did. Okay. We're good. Um, that's just, it, it cracks me up every time I think about flipping a ticket. That's the first thing that comes to mind. But uh, you know, one of the more common things, and I know this is something we've talked about um, it just in the past. And I think we say all the time, a lot of traders are using bracket orders pretty consistently. Um, we're always recommending use your brackets. And a lot of times you're going to manually get out of that trade. What sometimes I think traders forget is to go ahead and like clear all the prior orders that they had in. Because when you manually exit, it's not canceling out that stop and profit target you had in there. They'll close out and they'll walk away for the day. And um, certain platforms, maybe some of them you can hit exit all orders across all products. Um, some platforms, you have to go into each and every product to make sure you're closed out. Um, and I know that's just a common mistake a lot of traders, especially in the beginning, tend to make. They think, oh, I closed my trade, so everything got canceled. And it doesn't, that's not always the case. Um, so I think that's one of the, I know it's it's kind of, uh, sounds simpler than it is, but a lot of people, myself included, have made that mistake too many times. Yeah, it's happened to, it's happened to me. Um you know, sometimes it's, these things aren't perfect. Just look at how uh, interactive brokers, now it's $109 million they lost when oil went negative. Uh, None of these systems are perfect. There's, you know, you have to be really confident that your orders are where you want them to be and that they're gone when they're not. Uh, Due diligence. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. You bring up the interactive brokers. Um, just something I've been reading. I've been reading a lot about it because I just the the whole concept here is pretty insane. Um, and I think it goes really well here. If your dome freezes during a high volatility time, don't keep buying because <laughs> you think you're getting a good price. Um, a lot of what that's kind of what happened with interactive brokers. They're seeing these prices trading one cent, three cent. In that lower, you know, not realizing it can go negative, the dome wouldn't allow it to, their systems just would not go negative. So they stopped and people kept picking up contracts there. And that's kind of part of the, that's part of the reason when it settled down at what, 37, 26 or something that day, um, all these traders thought, I'm not sure what's going on here. So I'm just going to sit and watch. I'm, I like my buy. It's holding a bottom, not realizing it's now negative 30, negative 20, mm, negative 37. Yeah. A guy in Canada with a $70,000 brokerage account, got a margin call that night for $9 million. I read that same article in Wall Street Journal. <laughs> now, oh the, real, the real bug with that, and this, this goes into something with uh, traders too, um, is if something is absolutely looks too good to be true, it probably is. So what this guy was doing is he was buying oil at one cent, two cents, you know, all these contracts. Now, the real stupid thing that interactive brokers did was they used that price to calculate the margin. So usually you would need a lot more money to trade hundreds of oil contracts, but they were taking a $30 margin per barrel because oh, they were calculating gosh. it as a one cent, you know, <laughs> calculate the risk into it. 
that's clearly a thing of too good. If you're able to buy 200 contracts of something at one cent, you have to think is who is selling me 200 contracts of this at one cent, <laughs> all right? And where you see this happen, you know, that was a, maybe a one-time thing. We'll see if it happens again is uh, a mistake I see, or, you know, I'll speak from personal experience, is you can get yourself in trouble trading off the open of the futures in illiquid markets. Um, you have to be very careful when the spreads are wide, when something looks like it's a good deal or stuff like that. Generally, if, unless you're an expert, wait for things to fill in, right? I absolutely agree. Um, and just so every, just on that interactive broker, something I just want to drop in there, they are covering um, the losses taken by these guys because their systems weren't effective. So fortunately, um, the gentleman from Canada, and there's a few other ones out there, they are, uh, they're getting their money back. They're not being held for that $9 million loss that was caused by interactive brokers systems acting up. Um, so shout out to them. I think that that's good that they're doing that. that. Yeah. And um, up. it is, I, I, I couldn't imagine, could, could you imagine getting a margin call at one o'clock in the morning saying, hey, you owe us $9 million. You started this account with 77,000, but now you owe me nine. I mean, that's just, it's, I don't know uh, what yeah. to do. Honey, <laughs> we got a problem. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're moving to Mexico. We're moving. <laughs> <laughs> I did like how, you know, the guy that runs it, the CEO or whatever, is a billionaire, the founder and stuff like that. And uh, I think he said, this is just, you know, a $109 million penalty. He, he kind of dismisses, I hope I can someday get to the point where I'm just like, ah, it's $109 million. We'll learn from the mistakes. Yeah, we'll move on. Yeah. So as far as uh, some, what, what do you guys feel are some other mistakes you see people commonly make maybe uh, beyond just order entry? So we've talked um, FOMO, we've talked order entry. You uh, know, one I have question of is just Mickey, you're working with these funded traders day in and day out, always coming in. You know, you see a lot of new traders, obviously, what was it? March 700 something coming into the funded accounts. Um, <clears throat> what are some of the common mistakes you see there? Um, I think the biggest thing is, well, there's a couple big things. I mean, I, I do see common themes in the funded accounts and, you know, I think it, it starts with, you know, one of the things being people are excited to get in there and trading. They get in there and they start trading like, you know, mad men and women. They're very, very active, um, long, short, long, short throughout the day. And um, everybody, when they're trading, they need to slow down a little bit. I think there's a lot of excitement around and, you know, feeling like they need to perform and show performance. Whereas, you know, that doesn't pay off for us or for the traders. So, you know, I would say patience is a huge thing that, you know, traders are lacking, not just here, but elsewhere in general. And, um, you know, the one most detrimental thing, and this is kind of what I want to highlight is, taking big losses in your account. The goal here with trading is to make money, not to lose money. And when you're taking large losses early on, especially early on in the account, you know, you want your P and L to go Northeast, you know, um, or your account balance to go Northeast. And I just see people taking too large of losses early on in their account. It's hard to come back from number one, your account balance is down. Number two, psychologically, it does mess people up. If you take a large hit, um, what do you want to do? You want to get that money back. So people start trading bigger than they should, more than they should to get that money back. And that only makes your, your account balance go, you know, the other way than intended. So Unless you get lucky. I mean, you, you can't make money in this business by risking tons of money or at least losing. I mean, big risk, little risk, uh, big risk, big reward, little risk, little reward. I understand that. But when you're allowing yourself to take large losses that are a, a large percentage of the overall account that you have to play with or trade with, it's not going to end well. Um, so I would say people taking too large losses. Do you think that uh, part of that, Mick, is... You know, yeah, they're excited to get into the funded account. They're excited to be able to make money. I think one of the mistakes that creates that situation you're talking about, Mick, is they abandon the strategy that got them there to begin with. They just don't follow the same rules. And, you know, we used to say it was important to dance with the one you brung. You know, yeah. you really have to respect how you got there and continue in that path and in that process. 
to help, you know, hopefully guarantee your eventual success in that. If you get into the funded account, jettison everything you get that got you there. There's no consistency to what you're doing. How can you expect consistency? Yes, uh, I do see that. If, it, if it's not broke, you shouldn't be trying to fix it. Um, why change something that's working? Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny you mentioned that, John. Years ago when we used to interview every single one of our traders prior to putting them in the funded account, mm -hmm. you know, I did hear from a number of people about a specific strategy. And then once they start actively trading, and the strategy always sounds great. And then when they start trading, they're not doing anything that they told us that they were doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you don't want to lose more than a couple, you know, professional traders. I, I, just, I know this just because I just did my video on daily loss limits. Wouldn't risk more than a, you don't want to lose more than a couple percent of your account in a day. And that Definitely. would be like maybe like the, the high end of it. And I think that sometimes we see people taking 50% drawdowns, which is not what people who are successful do. No, I mean, it's completely unsustainable. And I do see people that are willing and think it's okay to risk 50% of what they have. And it's just not, I mean, you get cut in half in one day. It's not sustainable. What happens the next day when you, you know, lose the same amount? You're, and you you're gain out hundred percent. If you lose 50%, you got to gain a hundred percent just to get back to even. Right. Right. Um, another thing is, you know, I see a lot of traders that they may be okay losing $900 in a day. They think that's fine. No problem with it. It doesn't bother them at all. But these same traders that think it's acceptable to lose 900, their biggest winning day might only be 300. So it's completely, that's something that's backwards. Um, it's easier to lose money in this business than it is to make it. But I don't think anybody belongs losing money. Uh, their losing days should not outweigh their winning days. You know, if, if I'm only making $300 a day, I should not be losing more than 300 period. And it should be less than that, that I'm willing to risk. If I can't take $300 out of the market on a regular basis, I shouldn't be losing. I have no business losing more than 300 in a day. I think that's one of the best tools within our trader dashboard. I know there's a ton of stuff there that you can utilize. Also, I apologize in advance. If you can hear the lawnmowers, my neighbor just came out two giant tractors running up and down right next to where I'm sitting. Um, but uh, He has two tractors? Well, he's got a landscaping crew. Oh, okay. That's, um, that's interesting. Yeah, they got two big you know, professional mowers going. Um, but when you look at your trader dashboard and you can look back at you know prior combines, step one, step two, your funded account, there are two little things there, average winning day and average losing day. I love this. One of the first things I look at when I talk to a trader and the first question I'll ask, how does your average losing day compare to your average winning day? If your average losing day is greater than your average winning day, you're going to have a hard time being successful at this because we all know this is a, an industry of wins and losses, ups and downs. And it's a matter of how do I, as John always says, put the math on my side. How do I put the math on my side in this situation to grow the account? And I know a lot of traders, traders, <clears throat> traders will say, well, you know what? My winning days are 78%, so I have some room there. And you know, it's great for maybe that little period that you're running at a 78% win rate, but it's not sustainable over time. If you can find a way to be to set yourself up so that you are it's you're winning half the time and losing half the time and you can be profitable at that rate, you're going to be uber profitable at 78%. Yeah. You know, to throw myself under the bus again, I've, I've made a ton of mistakes in trading over the years. Uh, one thing I used to do was, you know, have let a large losing day, you know, going back to what I was saying, I'd have a losing day that was bigger than my winning days, uh, average winning days, call it. Um, and it would take me sometimes weeks to make back the loss from one trading day mm -hmm. and it's completely backwards. You want to be in a position where, you know, it takes you a couple or a few or several losing days to wipe out one winning day. You don't want to be, you know, chasing your tail where you're trading, you know, you, it might take you 
you know, five days to make back what you lost in one day. It, it's that's backwards. Um, it should really be, you know, Hey, I had a good winning day today, whether it's your average or better, it should take you a, a number of days to wipe losing days to wipe that out. Absolutely. You always say two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, one step back. Yeah. It's probably the best thing I could preach. You know, it's, it's, Money management 101. If I make a thousand dollars and I continue trading, I should not be. I should. If I give back half of that, stop for the day. Walk away up 500. It's a really good day. If I end the day positive, a thousand dollars, you know, the next day I shouldn't be risking a thousand dollars. It's money management. Our goal is to continuously increase this account balance. And if you're making a grand on a day and then you give back a grand the next day you went nowhere and you're probably pretty frustrated so you, you've got to as i like to say ratchet that account balance higher and you do have traders that you know that let's say they have a really good day they make two grand one day they don't realize that they're at greater risk of a bigger loss the following day some of the biggest losses come after the biggest after winning the day. biggest winning day and that's something i was guilty of too I made that mistake several times early on you know um it, i guilty. used to th yeah i i used to think hey you know i had a really good day now i've got all this extra cushion i can risk more on the next trading day or the next trade and it's just not the way it works there's nothing worse than letting a winning a good winning day and i say good because you know it's easy to be up a couple hundred bucks and then go down a couple hundred bucks. I don't think there's anything too alarming there. But if you're up two thousand dollars, you can't go back to zero. You can't let a a good day turn into nothing, and you certainly don't want to be letting a good day turn into a negative day. I've I've seen this. You know, traders they're they're up a lot of money. Not only do they give it all back, but they lose more and. Yeah. You know, that's, that's not treating this like a business. You need to separate what you want from your money management. So your buy, it's good to have a bias. You need to have a bias on direction, but money management is the most paramount thing in this business. Um, you need to put that in front of what your thoughts and emotions are. Well, speaking of knowing when to walk away, it's probably a good time to start wrapping things up here because we could talk about this all day. Yeah. <laughs> I got segues in my mind ready to pop off. But first, Dan, do you have a quote for us here? Yes. Yes. One yes. moment. I, it disappeared on me. One second. Talk amongst yourselves. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's better be a good one. Loading. Loading. Here we go. When you make a mistake, there are only three things you should ever do about it. Admit it, learn from it, and don't repeat it. Paul Bear Bryant. Ah, Love it. That's Bear a good Bryant. one. Very relevant to this conversation too. Yeah, I think it kind of just goes back to one of the things that I was taught really right at the beginning when I started doing this was losses are totally necessary at all, but don't a loss is what you're paid to learn from the market. You learned a new experience and don't take that loss again. Yeah. I you pay for correlates. You pay for your learning experiences in this business. Um, one thing I, before we go, I just want to say, you know, as you make mistakes and you learn from them and you don't make them again, you know, I like to say there's a funnel of all these mistakes you make. And as you learn from them and don't make them again, that funnel narrows up. And then when that happens, you know, you have so much more room to be profitable um, and productive in the industry. Thanks, Absolutely. Mick. So uh, I'll say roll tide in honor of Bear Bryant. <laughs> and then Hogue, you want to sign us out today? Yeah, sure. Get out there and profit, traders. Trade well. We'll see you next week, guys. Have a good one.